Hi there, in this series of videos I'm going to demonstrate how we can start to actually build circuits and test them with Arduinos initially with Tinkercad so it allows us to build and develop and prototype what we're going to do with Arduino in Tinkercad and we'll move on to actually showing how we would then build and test that on Arduino itself and then on to how we can then develop that to modify scripts so that they can then communicate with Unity via Ardity. So we'll start with something quite simple. Starting at the Arduino Tutorials webpage, I'm going to skip over getting started. There's a lot of more basic information there. Uh, have I got this here? So yeah, there's a lot of basic information through the getting started pages that we'll talk you through and show you in much more detail all the background of the Arduino and we may be covering that elsewhere as well. But if we just jump to the built-in examples, we'll see there are a lot of different samples of code, but not just of code, they also include the samples of the circuits. So if I come to this one, the button example, use a push button to control an LED and I've already got that open here. So this page outlines how to build a circuit and the code for using that circuit and it's all here. So we've got the circuit here and we can see what this is and it tells us the parts it requires. You will find there are lots of different versions of Arduino, uh, lots of different Arduino boards. All of these examples are, unless they say otherwise, should work with an Arduino Uno or an Arduino Uno compatible microcontroller board. There's lots and lots of them. And they may also work with some of the other variants of Arduino. And so we've got another variant that's shown there. And sometimes they do look slightly different from the standard, but they generally all work pretty much the same. And so here we have a circuit. We've got an Arduino. We've got a wire onto a breadboard. We have a push button, a resistor, and some more wires to connect things up. So let's build that circuit. We can basically build it off of either by following the picture here or by trying to follow the schematic diagram when we build our circuit. So what we end up building if we're following the schematic, it may look a little bit more different. We may have put things in different locations, but it should still be an equivalent circuit. And the code here we would do and just apply. So let's get started. I'm going to come to Tinkercad. I'm going to do create new circuit. Here we are, we get a default name. I'm going to call this, I'm going to rename it. Arduino button test. And then the first thing I want to add is an Arduino. And I'm also going to add a breadboard. You can find there are ways in which you can sort of add these in one step or you can add these together. So there is my breadboard and there is my Arduino. And I can rearrange these however I want on the screen. So let's look and see what else I require. I, I'm going to build this from the schematic and then we might be able to compare and see what I've done differently compared to the illustration above. So I need a wire from ground and that's going to connect to a resistor. So there are a couple of, a few different ground pins on Arduino. So that's a ground pin. Anything that says GND is a ground pin and that's the sort of the base voltage, the zero voltage or the, the low voltage output. So let me connect that. Uh, if I click here and then here, that allows me to click it and just tidy that up so it looks nice. So now this whole row of pins in the breadboard, these are all connected together. There is a, a trick that a lot of people will do when using a breadboard, which is to connect the ground lines above and below. And so what I can do, for example, here and to do that neatly is do that and that means that both of these rows are connected to ground it's not really required on this circuit a very good practice is to always color your ground wires black and that makes it very clear that this is our ground signal our ground voltage 
Okay, and that can help avoid mistakes later. I'm going to need a resistor, and it is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So I'm going to look for a resistor. There is one there. Different ways I can connect this. Perhaps the easiest is to connect this down from ground pin to this one. So it's here and I can see it's connected in this terminal on this row. So that's connected to ground. It says it's one kilo ohm resistance. I want it to be 10 kilo ohm resistance. So let's change that. And that's also connected to this column of pins here. So let's look back at the schematic. So from this end of the resistor, there are two things happening. One is it's got to connect to pin number two on the Arduino, and it's also going to connect to a push button. So let's connect this to pin two. First of all, let's bring that here, and I'm going to bend this down. Looks a little bit weird there, but then I can bring it, bring it back in. There we go. And I can keep that green. As well as connecting to pin 2, it also connects to my push button. So let's find a push button. Now, these push buttons do look a little weird in that they have four pins. And so we need to understand how these are connected internally, which is a little bit unusual. In that terminal 1B and terminal 1A, so we've got two terminals with the number 1 and two with the number two. The terminals on the left side are directly connected to each other inside. So those are always connected. So what I've actually done is I've bridged this circuit now so that this column and this column are connected. So this is a continuous connection now all the way in this column. And if you look at terminal 2B and terminal 2A, these two pins are connected to each other. And so this column here and this column here are now connected internally. What the push button does is that when we push the button, it creates a connection from one to two. So it adds an additional connection so it comes across. So this is the other side of the button is this column here, column number eight. So from the other side of the button, it's going to connect to the plus five volt connection. So let's take it here, why not? And the five volt connection is going to come in here. That says 5E and it helpfully highlights it for us. And this is our plus voltage. So let's make this red. And again, good practice, make your plus voltage value red. That's the circuit. It might look a little bit different from the sample circuit, but I've done it by following the schematic. So it should be correct. We'll find out soon if it is. But the Arduino itself in this simulation doesn't have any code yet so we need to add the code as well and here is our sample code and let me just take all of that and control c and i'm going to come to code here now there are different code modes in tinkercad the most basic one is blocks which is a bit like scratch if any of you've done scratch before so it allows you to do the code for your arduino in this very simple block like way however we are going to do text gets rid of all of that and then we can just paste in paste that in and now we close the code start the simulation it takes a little while to initialize so we can see the power's gone in here and what this code does is it lights up an LED connected to pin 13 now we don't actually have anything connected to pin 13 however this internal LED that's part of the Arduino board and soldered onto it is also connected to pin 13. So this is very useful for quick circuit building because it allows us to just test whether this is working. So let's press the button and you should be able to see that the LED is lighting up. There's a marker there to show it's lighting up when I let go. There's a little bit of a delay because it is a simulation. It's not working quite in real time, but it did again disappear. So if you watch this as I press the button, press the button and let go. So I can do that just by clicking on, on the button in the simulation. So let me stop there. And that demonstrates that we are able to build circuits and prototype them and put in the Arduino code. And that's a simple example, but you can do some stuff that's a lot more complicated than that and it will still work in Tinkercad. The next step is we'll take this and we'll actually build an actual Arduino circuit and we'll get it running on that. And then we'll look at how we can modify it 
to have a push button communicate back to Unity and do stuff in Unity perhaps. <laughs>